two. Okay. You wouldn't two. even have a Quran if there was no Bible. Okay. The the Bible. I'm listening to you. The Bible was here before the Quran. Let me explain this. Can okay, I? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. The to early you. church and the early Christians had the teachings of Jesus as well as the apostles. Okay. And the early Christian belief was that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave. He was resurrected from the grave. I'm just. And listening. in Christ, we have forgiveness of sins. And this is how we enter into the kingdom of heaven. If I was to ask you as a Muslim, how are you going to enter into... He said he's listening, but he's not looking at him. First of all, he's not looking at him. And just when he thought that he was going to stop, he just raised his hand like, uh, like he's about to say something. Like he's, he's got something bottling, bro. Like he's just waiting one millisecond, bro, <laughs> to speed it out, bro. He's not, he's not listening. Heaven. By this what guy. means? How, how do you enter into the kingdom of heaven? I can tell you. Huh. No problem. I got you. First thing is, you said that if there was no Bible, you have no Quran. That's wrong. Why? Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu couldn't even read or write. He couldn't read the Bible. He couldn't plagiarize it. No, no, no. Let me finish now. I respectfully listen to you. <laughs> so you're, we're going to have a respectful conversation. I appreciate it. What's your name? Michael. Michael. Good guy, Michael. So. To say that if there was no Bible, there'd be no Quran is wrong. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, according to the consensus of historians, could not read or write, let alone read Hebrew or Greek. So when the Quran was revealed to the Prophet wasallam, he didn't need anything before it. Now, secondly, you ask, as a Muslim, how would you enter heaven, the kingdom of God, right? Yes. The same way that Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them, taught their people the Ten, Ten Commandments, Commandments. That first, you only believe in one God. No three, no two. Hear, O <laughs> Israel. <you're> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, hey. That's, that's the thing, bro. Like, I love... Like, it can be really confusing at first, but I love listening to all the people. Because at the end of the day, we're just on the same boat from a different perspective. It's, that's how I see it, bro. Like, we all brothers. We just believe in God in a different way. And that's, I think that's, it's good, but it's not good at the same time. I don't know if, if that makes sense. Because it's, it's good if we have like a line settled and people wouldn't have this confusion when they first encounter God. Uh, but at the same time, like, I mean, it's whatever. It's nothing you can do about it. It's nothing you can do about it. Your Lord is one. Then you do good deeds. You don't worship idols. The, Second commandment. I was going to say that they really having a meaningful conversation there. Like, I love it. I love it that being respectful of each other. <laughs> Unlike the old people that we've uh, reviewed before, this guy right here and the other one, they are really respectful to each other. Don't worship idols, don't worship statues, don't worship prophets. When you have that believer tawheed and you do your good deeds the best you can, and even if you're lacking out of the mercy of Allah, you will enter Jannah. Hmm. Okay, there is no part three. But that Muslim guy is really knowledgeable. Okay. Uh, now the Christian obviously didn't came prepared. He was just probably hanging around and came came across this guy. But I believe if they were to have another encounter and the Christian guy had some preparation before that, the conversation could you know go another route. But we're never gonna know.